Welcome back to V8 Creative, the home of automotive creativity. And on this episode, we continue to build one of the world's fastest hypercars. Welcome back to the Dean Den. And today I got a complete 24 hour pass. The wife has gone away, she's staying over with my daughter and the creative director has gone with us. So I'm going to have zero, zero interruptions today. And days like this are, they're so precious. Anyway, right, so the plan for today is, as you can see here, we have no rear clamshell at the moment. So it's ready to go back on. So. Rich the lift is unfortunately a bit busy, so I'm gonna get my son, Barney, to come and help. So we're going to take the rear clamshell, pop it back on the car, tighten it down, and then we've got to take the center section off. Now there's quite a lot of steps to do to take this off. We've got to take the doors off. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I need my son, because he's gonna be holding them as I undo the hinges. And also next, we have to take off the scoop on top, and then where at the factory they've done the broad body prefit, I have to drill out a few of the rivets that have been put in by Jeff. So I'm sure this is gonna go fairly straightforward. Well, let's hope. Anyway, all there is left to do is get spannering. Now, before we start undoing anything as regards these body panels, what we do is we put on bits of tape to ensure alignment when we put the car back together is perfect. So what I do is put a bit of blue tape on there, get a knife, cut it through, and there we go. And what we do is we do that on all the joins. It's mainly where the centre tub fits on the side pods because these are fixed in position on the chassis. So I'm gonna do the same rear, front, on both sides of the car. One roof scoop off. Reminds me of the GTR with that roof. Anyway, now let's move on to starting to take off the fasteners.
this up on the cushions. Yep. I hold, then yeah. I can rotate, hold this, and then you put those together. Yeah, then I can f around. Yeah. Yeah. So, just see if yours will come up. Yes. Okay, mine's off the stud scenario. Yeah, mine's off. Okay. There. Yeah. And here. And what we're we'll trying to do is pull up here. Yeah, and then back. And, back then, and then back, yeah. No, my oh, excuse my language. Right, okay, so now if you move to there and there. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. Y'all riding shotgun. The feeling would change. I'm wide awake, take me away now Cause I, I won't go down the same old path again now No, I've been running out of air so let me catch my breath Feeling I've got to make me crazy If I'm having a good time don't you blame me Yeah, this feeling I've got to make me crazy Making me crazy So I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive So here we are We have the centre tub in the spray booth Now, yeah, we're gonna be doing some painting Yeah, I know But there are a few other things we need to do to this before it goes back on the car Now, as you can probably see this is a very, very well, delicate piece of kit. Now, I'm not sure if you can see here, but where the doors go, there are basically two great big holes. And in the middle, the front and rear of this center section is held together by 18 inches of fiberglass covered with a lovely gel coat. So I'm gonna just show you the few things I've done to make sure this is not gonna flex, not gonna warp, and not gonna crack. So, the first thing I did is, before I took the center section off of the car, I measured the width of where the door sits, the door opening. Now, when I've got this off and on these um, four trestles, what I did is I cut a piece of wood, drilled it, and put that gap to exactly what the door width would be. And what that's done is that's firmed this up considerably. And I've done the same the other side. Now I've used the side repeater hole here and I've used one of the fixing holes back here. So I've had to drill nothing new. And what that does is that just gives it all a bit of stability. Also, slightly out of shot, what I've done is the actual roof section, which is only about that wide, I've supported it with a box and a pillow, of course. Don't tell the wife, I just uh, took it from the spare room. Anyway, next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep this for getting ready for paint and also getting ready for having to bomb something into the dashboard. Now, when Ultima provide this after the body pre-fit, these rubber door seals are pre-fitted. Now, I'm gonna take these off before I'm gonna paint it because I don't wanna overspray on these. And they just pull off very straightforward. They're not glued at all. And the thing to do is take them off and then label them left and right hand side, obviously, just to make life easier when you put them back. And on that note, let's get prepping. Well, well, I spared you all of this, all of this masking. I must say, I've been doing this most of the afternoon and it's been fine. I've had some Formula One on in the background, reminiscing over some pretty good races last year. But the reason why I've taken so much care masking all this up is there are particular areas in this very complex molding that need to be sprayed and other areas which are finished in this gel coat which obviously need to be left. Now what I want to do is shout out to Ultima designing this incredible mold. It is so complex and also to the laminators out there because I tell you what, this is complicated. Now you'll have seen in the previous clip I removed the door seals and what it leaves for us to spray in satin black mainly is the roof, 
above your head and also the front windscreen sort of pillars. Now these are in view when you're sitting in the car so it's essential these are masked well and sprayed as well as possible. I've keyed it with using some finer grit than I used for the areas which are sort of under the engine bay because what I want is a really really nice finish. Now also on this bulkhead the other side I've masked off the area where the carpet is going to be glued that's the bulkhead carpet right behind your head because of course using glue on this paint like when I was fitting that heat shield you don't want paint on that surface because it can lift away. Also what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be spraying behind the dashboard. Now yep, yeah, no one's going to see that, I know. But one thing my dad taught me is he said when you're modelling it doesn't matter if someone can see it or not see it when the model is finished. You know it's there. So I've taken extra time to mask all this off so I'm going to spray inside this area as well. I just can't help myself. So as you can see I've used blue tape. I've just used a slightly different tape this time, 3M again, but this time I've purchased 30 millimeter wide blue tape to save me having to double down on masking tape and the blue tape. And I guess that's about it. So what I'm going to do is re-rig up my spray booth and what I'll do is I'll skip showing you me spraying this because there's no point. But what I'll do is I'll show you the end result when it's all finished. Here we are. Whew. Well, I've turned this center section upside down, as you can see, because now I've painted all the inside. The next part of assembly is one, to put on all those door seals again, which is an easy job, and then to fit the roof scoop onto the top of the center section. Now, let me just get it for you. And I've just placed it on. Now, as you saw when I took this off, it was held on by four set screws, two at the back and two at the front. Now, when this is actually permanently put on the car, there are an additional line of rivets that go on this side and this side, and we also bond it in place. Now, clearly I'm not gonna do that until basically, I've probably fit the windscreen and then I'll put this on permanently. But for the time being, there's a few jobs we need to do on the scoop. Firstly, you're probably going to guess what I'm going to say. We need to paint the inside. Yep. So all this raw fiberglass will be painted. And also what we need to do is the mouth of this here. I need to mask this off and paint it as well. Um, and you'll see what I mean when I actually mask this off. And what that will do is also hide the two black set screws that hold the front of the scoop on. Now, in addition, what we have to do is you can see that there's a hole and when that goes on the roof, that hole, if I look, if I peer down the actual intake, I'll be able to see this white roof um, sort of like glowing, which we don't want. And what Ultima do is they provide a vinyl kit that actually goes around the car and other parts, which I'll show you at a later stage of the build. But the one vinyl we need today is to actually apply to the top part of this roof to make it basically gloss black. And here we are in position, ready to do our deed with the roof scoop decal. Now, what I want to do is I want to give a big shout out to Lee. I haven't mentioned Lee at the factory for a while. And the reason why, Lee is the chap who does this. He wraps everything. He makes sure everything is accurately labeled and there's not too many items or too few. So for example here, roof scoop decal. 
And also we have here six rivets, not seven, not five, but six rivets, one, two, three, four, five, six, to put on the roof scoop. Now you think that's a pretty easy job to do, but if you imagine the Ultima has probably between two and a half and 3,000 components. My build so far, I have not had or one item too many or one item too few. And I'm talking about nuts, bolts, washers. So that's a big shout out. That shows things are done accurately and on point at the factory and big respect for that. So if we take this roof scoop decal out, here we go. And as we can see here, it's pre-cut to size and it goes the full width of this top surface and these little two cutouts go at the back and then this goes at the front. Now what I'm going to have to do I think is I'm just going to take that on there and then offer the roof scoop on top rather than measure I'm just going to do it like that because I think that is probably going to be more accurate. Let me get some tape. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. You're riding shotgun. The feeling will change. I'm wide awake. Take me away now. Okay, I think that's it. Now what I'm going to do is mark a center line at the top and also at the bottom so I know I've got it true. And then start peeling. <gasps> sure it'll be fine. I'll just get my squeegee tools. Now it's been a while since I've applied any vinyl, but here is a tool which I'd recommend getting. They're not expensive. So it's like a plastic spatula. And then this is a soft cover, which allows you to push off any air bubbles. Now I'm just gonna mark where the center is for this. Wow. Well, I tell you what, that was a lot easier than I thought. 
I might, I might need to just trim just there on that corner, but that wasn't difficult. Well, I need to sit down now. We're almost there. We're almost ready to put the center tub back on the car. Excellent. Now, there is one job I've got left to do that I haven't showed you. I'm not going to show you me spraying the inside of the roof scoop because it's the same. Masking, spray, unmasking. But anyway, what you can see here are two holes. And what we need to do is drill the holes for the washer jet, which is in there. Lee again, of course. His usual exacting standards. Let's get the washer jet out, which is there. I'll put the rest of that to one side. And then this is the wiper motor. Wow, now that's a nice bit of kit. Look at that, what a lovely wiper motor. I'm getting excited about things again. Just look at that. Look how small it is. Very compact. Wow, look at that. That's not gonna break. And as you can see here, there are two spindles that obviously come through here. Now, when you get the body prefit, the two holes are drilled there for these two. And, yep, they're the correct distance apart. So I am going to sort of measure this to see what size of drill I need. It will tell me in the uh, manual, I know, but okay. And yes, another episode draws to a close, and I must say, a very, very productive episode. I've managed to completely prep the centre section, ready to go back on the RS chassis. But actually, it can't go on back on quite yet, because I have to take the side pods off and spray those. So I just don't know what I'm going to do for room, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. And I'm just going to end on some pretty exciting news, well, probably more for me than you out there. I'm pleased to say, that VA Creative has reached its 1 million views on YouTube. Now, to me, it's this is just staggering that so many people want to join me in the Dean Den, but thank you to you all for subscribing. All those thumbs up, is, we seem to get a lot, so obviously you like what I'm doing, and keep tuned and keep spreading the word. Until next time, happy spannering. Me and my friends, these are the good times. And I